good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us again. Uh, my name is Jim Pogue. I'm Public Affairs Officer for the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, today, uh, Lieutenant Commander, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Hamilton will uh, be joining us. Uh, he'll give you a, uh, an update on the current situation with regard to Army Corps of Engineers operations, and then uh, we'll be glad to take your questions. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming out today. Uh, give you a quick operational update on where we're at with the Memphis District Corps of Engineers. As most of you are aware, the crest uh, the Mississippi has actually uh, hit Memphis now. We're looking at a uh, approximately a six inch a day uh, fall off in the river levels up through the weekend and through the middle of next week before we should see it start to pick up steam and drop off about a foot a day as we're looking at it. Uh, the crest currently, we're looking at it is currently cresting down in Helena, which is kind of in the southern part of our area of operations. Uh, you should start to see it there as well, start to drop off about six inches a day after the, the long, slow crest moves out in a couple of days. As far as the, uh, the other bases in our area, we also have, uh, I'm going to take, I know it's kind of hard to see, but on our map over here, we also have the uh, St. Francis River Basin and the White River Basin. Uh, it's a little known fact that both those bases were also in uh, record levels during this event. And we were in uh, basically what we call phase two operations in all areas of the district at one time, which has never been done before in this district. Uh, today, I'm, I'm glad to report that the upper and lower St. Francis Basin, those two in yellow that you see, they fell out of phase two and now they're in phase one, which is basically we, we scale back our operations in that area as the water recedes. Uh, however, in, obviously in the Mississippi area and through Memphis proper, we are still in phase two, which is our higher, highest level of activation, as well as the White River area. Uh, currently, we have about, we do have uh, just under 100, 100 folks in the field uh, out patrolling the uh, problem areas and making sure we stay on top of those. Uh, we've issued 54 pumps to date uh, to different local entities. We have uh, issued two, two and a half million sandbags, as well as about 540 rolls of poly. poly. Uh, right now, the, the biggest issues are still, in our, our, our estimation, is still the sand oil issues. Uh, we brought some graphic aids because there were a lot of questions yesterday about sand oils, and there's a little bit of confusion as to how serious it is. Uh, so we're going to try to give it a little bit of uh, perspective. Um, the sand, the the left side center is basically the beginning of a sample. It's very small, you know, you're talking about three inches in diameter, and it, and it starts to boil up. And then it grows, and when it starts to grow, and you see that material piping through the levee, and it starts to come up on the other side, what you do is you try to bring it with uh, sand pack. And what that does is it, you know, you got the pressure of the river on one side of the levee, and on the land side, you don't have a lot of pressure. So that water is trying to find a place to go and it starts to boil up on the land side. So what we do is we put sandbags in there and raise the water level and it, what it does is it tries to equalize the pressure. We continue to monitor those and make sure that the uh, water running through those sand boils are basically clear. That's what you want. You don't want to have material moving through there from underneath the levee because then you've got erosion going on underneath the levee which will then could cause the levee to uh, to sink and, and, and eventually fed. Um, this, the, the, these bottom two are kind of uh, ones that we're commonly seeing in our area of operation. And as you can see, those are considered actually large, large sample. These two up here, and I know it's really hard to see, but to put from some perspective, this is a sample we had in Illinois uh, last week that we had to do with rock. And that little orange thing right there, that's a man standing on it. So that's a very, very large sample. I mean, they get, this one we're calling the mega sample oil, that, that thing is huge. Uh, so you can get some very, very big ones. So the ones we're seeing down here uh, in the lower part of our area are, are rather minor. We're, we're, we're considering them minor. Uh, we do constantly keep watch on them, making sure that, that again, it's flowing clear and not material. That's, that's where we get concerned. And then we have to shift strategies and do other things uh, to, uh, to maintain them. But right now, down here, we're, we're not seeing that, so uh, we're, we're very glad of that. Uh, the only other area of concern we had in our district area of operation was in the White River Basin. 
we did have a levy over top and I, did, I just want to address that because there are some misnomers about levy over um, on these federal levies they're designed to a certain level and when water flows over top of it all that means is the water level has exceeded the design of the levy that doesn't mean the levy is fed okay that's what we wanted to do in that area because we can predict when the water is going to come over it and we can get people out of that area so that is what happened in one small area of our area out on the white river white river basin and the good news about that and all these levees in this area are made out of the same materials is when that levee over top we didn't see any erosion and that's where you get really concerned because that water running over the levee will start to erode away at the levee and in some cases especially well up north on the mississippi where the material is different and when that erodes away that can then cause a breach and uh, we did not see that the, the water in the white river area has already stopped overtopping that levee um, so that's that's real good news and that just goes to show that these levees down here are, are made out of good material they're good and sound in structure and you know we we just don't have any major concerns right now um, they're, they're all performing as designed and as planned uh, that said uh, again the, the fight continues um, we're not letting up by any any stretch of the imagination the uh, the water level is starting to recede up here but I can tell you that, that the, the water is still up high. And as long as it is uh, up high, it's, it's right now even higher than we've seen in years and still at historic levels. So we're gonna continue to remain vigilant out there and keep fresh folks out on the levees and make sure we're, we're patrolling them and, and, and doing what we need to do to keep, keep the folks safe. Um, and that is the last point I wanna make is we are in constant contact with the local officials in all of our areas to include the Memphis area and West Memphis area. Uh, we stay in constant contact with them, and if we have a we have an area we're concerned about, we're gonna let them know so that they can make sure the public knows the proper way. Uh, so that's, again, the message we wanna get out to everybody is continue to stay tuned to your local officials and, and understand the situation and what's going on, and we'll let them know if we feel that there are structural integrity issues so that they can, they can let the public know. And I can just tell you that working with the city of Memphis and Shelby County is they're they're a class A organization. They've been doing a great job, and uh, it's, it, I'm really impressed with the, the way they've uh, handled this this disastrous, potentially disastrous situation. So that said, I'll go ahead and take a few questions.